Hey guys, it's Carl. I'm back with another video. And this one, we'll take a look at 2024 Louisiana Derby. And I'm going to talk about the three horses I think most likely will win the race. And I'm going to start with the number five, Catching Freedom. And I think Catching Freedom is your most likely winner. If there was one horse I had to pick to kind of keep my trifecta super effect as the safest horse to finish in the money, I think it'd be Catching Freedom. And uh, to me, there's a slight difference between the horse most likely to finish in the money and the most likely winner. But in this case, Catching Freedom does both for me. And I think the pace in the Risen Star was not very fast at all. I thought Track Phantom kind of got to set his own fraction. wasn't really press. And Catching Freedom took the scenic rider around the far turn. And uh, he's still kind of a little goofy at times, just figuring it out. And I think Brad Cox, you know, if there's a trainer that can get the horse to make the right adjustments, take the step forward to do it, it'd certainly be Brad Cox's. Remember, uh, his horse Cyberknife from a couple years ago was kind of a goofy horse. And, yeah, he got him running right to win the Arkansas Derby. So I think you do the same for Catching Freedom. And, uh, you know, that being said, Catching Freedom is going to be my top horse, you know, my top pick. I, in a way, I'm, I'm not saying he's 100% guaranteed. I'm, I'm probably like an 8 out of 10. But, you know, if he runs a really bad effort, that will certainly shock me in this case. So for me, you know, four, you're getting 4 to 1 on the morning line. I tend to think it's probably going to drop down to 5 to 2, 3 to 1 come post time. I think a lot of the money is going to go towards Catching Freedom. But, you know, still, I think he'll be a better value to bet than trying to bet track Phantom to run the risk of a faster pace set up and, you know, just different factors going up against him for longer distance. So Catch Freedom is going to be, you know, my first choice, my top choice. Uh, second choice, I'm going to go up one to number four, Agate Road. And at the time of this, I'm not sure if he's going to run in the Jeff Ruby or if he's going to run here. Um, I think I've seen where Pletcher said that he's going to run the horse here. Uh to me, it would kind of make sense running the Jeff Ruby. I think it's a much easier feel, you know, with all this running on the turf. I don't, you know, you see a lot of turf horses kind of go to synthetic and have success. So if I was, you know, the owners for the Polish stable, I'd probably lean towards there. But I think Pletcher this time of year, he's really good about putting his horse in the spot where he thinks he's going to get the win. And I certainly think, you know, Agate Road can finish in the top three or four here. And, you know, that alone should be enough points if he gets in the top three to get him in the Derby and, I certainly think a little bit of, you know, if the pace breaks right and goes his way, uh, he's got some ground to pro. I think he could, you know, wind up sneaking up getting first, but certainly one that's going to be in all my bets, you know, trifecta, superfectas. And I kind of think he's the second most likely horse to uh, finish in the money out of all of them. So for me, Agate Rose is going to, you know, be my second choice. And uh, my third choice is we're going to go with a little bit of a long shot. And that's going to be the number nine, Real Man Violin. And, I just want to point out that with long shots, not a hundred percent guarantee success. You just, you know, you're picking long shots. You find certain things you like about the horse. And, you know, if you're right, let's say you're right one out of 10 times or even two out of 10, you know, you're hoping that that those two times you're right can turn your profit and make up for the other eight times you're wrong. So if this horse doesn't do anything, you know, I apologize in advance, but I'm going to give you the reason why I'm going to back real man violin. And, uh, the risen star, you know, that was his first race since Kentucky jockey club got second. Uh, it did take him a few tries to break his maiden, but, you know, McPeak has a lot of success. Once he breaks the maiden, he, you know, can get him up into, you know, State's company and kind of, you know, he seems to do good with that angle, even if it takes him a few times. And then in the Kentucky Jockey Club, you know, he got second to Honor Marie. And then he had the layoff till February and came back in the Brisbane Star. And uh, he was going good on the inside. And then uh, the Plesher horse in that race, I can't remember the, the name of the horse, is a number nine in that race that as soon as real man violin kind of got behind him something i guess he clipped hills i'm not sure what happened but like his progress just basically stopped and once that happened he just wouldn't yeah he wasn't the same horse at the end of that race but yeah there's a chance you know he won't have that same traffic trouble this time around uh you know certainly a horse that's going to come with the runs you can see you know he's always uh finishing in the money you know, he's going to come with the runs no matter how you know how many of the pieces is going to pick up and you know, it's not going to take very many, you know, uh, top three or four finish, probably go and get them in the start and get the Kentucky Derby. So for that, you know, I'm going to take a chance at 20 to one, maybe have a small bet going that way that he can pick up the pieces and, you know, enough to get first, but definitely one, you know, if he comes in my tries and supers that could spice it up. And, you know, if you decide to play him based on this, hopefully, you know, does the same thing for yours, but you know, that's all I got in this video. Thanks for watching guys. Plenty more to come.